All right, this is a video on a Nordic Track EXP 2000 XL, and it's a repair video. This unit stays in the garage. I've already removed the cover. Inside the cover comes the uh, drawing the schematic which I gotta go find. It's in my scanner. Okay. There's a front and back. I scanned the schematic and that's what you see here. Okay, I'm gonna go slow with this. It's a 1061. You can stop if you want to read the uh, schematic. It has the upper console. It has a motor controller board and it has the treadmill uh, motor right here. Treadmill motor. This card is that card and the other one is right here. What I'm going to do is to plug it in and demonstrate uh, what, what it's doing or not doing and how I isolated the components down. If we look at the second page, it discusses LEDs and there are basically uh, four of them. 120 volt, a 9 volt LED, a pulse width modulation LED, and a 5 volt LED. All right, let me slowly go through this if you guys want to uh, you find it of use. All right, now this has been in the garage for years. Excuse me. Basically, uh, since 2006, it's never been lubed, which is part of its problem, I do believe. And uh, let's get to showing you how I'm going to uh, troubleshoot it. Stand by. All right. Step one is to plug it in. Going to plug this unit in like so. I'm at the plug, you're at the camera. So with that, I think I heard a beep. There are uh, the LEDs, one is over here. This one says 120 volts. This one here says five volts. The one back here says plus nine volts. That one that is not blinking is the pulse width modulation. And the way this works is it sends a control signal from this card to the uh, power card, the motor controller, the MC70. Let me uh, start this thing. And we get no movement. But what you have is that LED is flashing. So it's sending a, a signal to that control card and is not doing anything. So let me uh, stop the unit. And you can see the LED light went away. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's do the incline. Okay, you heard it go up. You should be able to see it inclining right there. This is the, uh, right here is the, uh, there's a screw. You can see 
right down below is it went up. I lubricated it once, I'm gonna lubricate it again. The screw is right there at the end and it just basically spins that motor. It was frozen up from no use, but after getting it to work, I'm gonna have to get some lubricant and take care of a lot of that too. But yeah, I need to start exercising and uh, that's the power controller. Now I'm gonna show you how I troubleshot this. The question is, is it this card, this card, or the motor? All right, so let me go unplug this. All right, so we're now unplugged. And again, it's one of basically three possible things. One, one of the two circuit cards, two of the two circuit cards, the motor, or all, all three. Now, if you take a, well, let's continue on with the troubleshooting. All right, from what we read here, it appears our power board looks good. All right. Looking at the schematics, the power board looks good. This motor here is the inclination motor. You can see here what the card uh, part number is. It's a uh, series PB-121-158384. The motor controller board, that's the motor controller, that's the uh, power board. The motor controller is an MC dash 70 aw rev dash or part number one two four four three eight okay this motor magnet. All right. There's the information on the motor. All right. What it basically is, it's a DC motor. Let's see if I can bring the camera over here and have you read it right side up. There's the information on the motor. I hope that comes out well enough. But it's a direct current motor. Stand by. Okay, and looking at the schematic, here's the motor. The motor is a DC, you can tell by the straight line. The other motor here is AC. This is the motor, it's uh, pulse with modulated, so it sends in direct current pulses. It has a thermal switch, so we're going to check the thermal switch, see if it's good, and then test the motor. All right, setting this down over here, we have the blue wires you'll see a, a thermal switch, a blue wire, and another blue wire. Okay, and so we're gonna disconnect the blue wire. Here's the switch, here's the blue wire. Gonna disconnect it from the board. 
I'm going to try to disconnect it from the board. Like so. And something that's, they really did do this right. Here's the other switch. Okay, and, and you can see one is a male, one's a female, so you're going to get it back in the right uh, direction, plus it's just a switch. So, with that, I'm going to grab my old trusty fluke. I have it set for resistance. Let's set this so you can see it. Can you see it there? Uh, of course not. So, okay. Alrighty. You should be able to see it there. Going to bring the two wires here to go into one there's one there's the other side and you can see five ohms so that's the let me get on the contact a little better three, four ohms right there. So it's low resistance. So the switch is good. So let me hook this back into the board. I'm gonna move my meter. Hook this back up. The other side of this switch back onto the board where it belongs. Okay, so with that, as we check out the motor, the next thing we're going to do is to uh, hook in a power source. Now this is a DC motor, so it uses direct current, and it also has pulse width modulation. Here is the input to the battery, uh, to the uh, motor, and I'm going to use a battery to see if I can get the motor to spin. Okay, a battery will be constant uh, power on, which would be the PWM working basically uh, very fast or slow. Now the voltage range changes from the power supply, but I only have this 12 volt uh, battery. So let's hook up the positive to the positive, okay, and the negative to the negative, and then you should see it moving. The treadmill is now spinning and moving. So the motor is good. Okay, the motor turns. I'm going to call it good. The power board appears to show uh, goodness. Okay. Now I could put a probe, and I, I, I'm not going to do that for this video. I'll show you maybe on the next one. But uh, you, you can see there's a plus voltage and a minus, and so you can measure across. Uh, 
those. And I chose not to do it for one specific reason. Let me hook this back up. Again, the keys, these are gendered the right way, so you can't go wrong. And the reason I didn't do much more troubleshooting from there, we take a good close look, and I'll get you a better look when the card comes in. But as I zoom in here, and I was looking to get the part number, I noticed this diode is looking bad. It's burnt. It shouldn't be burnt. I noticed some heating on these resist... Okay, hold on, man. These are resistors, and they're, they set off the board for power, and it uh, looks like uh, they're, they, they've been hot. So this uses a tremendous amount of energy, probably because I don't lubricate the uh, treadmill. But be that as it may, if you zoom in even... Okay, I'm going to have to disconnect the camera. Stand by. Okay, keep saying okay because I'm trying to want to make sure my monotone uh, it works. The mono, not stereo. But if you look in there, you can see a bad diode. You can see where a capacitor has leaked. That would be right in there where the capacitor has uh, leaked. And it looks like the card has uh, failed. So I went online and I ordered one, the MC70 controller, and I'm waiting for it to arrive. So that's how I did the troubleshooting of this unit, and I'll show you the installation of the card uh, when it arrives. Thank you.